Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and you probably know that I like making videos about rocket stoves. In fact, I had a comment recently from Eternal Fizzer that said, I just threw one together using recycled chimney bricks. He also said I could really use some more instruction on how to get started quickly so I don't smoke up the neighborhood. And lighting a rocket stove can be a little tricky and it can be slow, but the best way to make it not smoky is to get that boosted burn going as fast as possible. So to help you do that, here are 11 ways to light a rocket stove. All right, so here's a quick look at the, the different things I'm gonna use for my fire starter. Got newspaper, got some Q-tips, some of which are, have been soaked in wax. Got a lighter, got some matches. I have some fire starters that I call the rocket boosters, and they're actually designed to go with my the Rocket King, which is my production rocket stove. Got some dryer lint, dryer lint with wax in it, and then some cardboard with wax in it. I also have some oil and cooking spray. I'm gonna try these things to help try and boost some of these other elements, again, to get our fire going as fast as possible. All right, so we're gonna start by loading up the four stoves behind me here on Rocket Stove Row. So we're going to start down here on this end lighting the Rocket King. And I wanted to show you that it is indeed possible to light a rocket stove with just a match and the smallest of twigs. So the R and K cutouts on the front of the stove are for branding, but they're also for airflow and lighting the stove. So to set this up to light with just a match, I start with the smallest of twigs and build a small partial teepee down the side of the stove beside the firebox. Basically putting these sticks as close to the R and the K opening as possible. Once my teepee's in place, I'm going to carefully build the rest of the fire. Alright, now we're ready to light. All right, it took a little bit of coaxing, but it is possible to light it with just a match. Now the Rocket King is definitely a non-traditional rocket stove, but in the design I sacrificed some of the traditional elements to make it flat pack and portable. And in my personal opinion, the two most important elements of a rocket stove are airflow and the ability to use found fuel and this stove satisfies both those requirements. The Rocket King is designed to be used with a six inch pot and it's made out of stainless so it won't rust. All right, let's move on to stove number two, the fire brick rocket stove. For my next fire starting element, I'm gonna use an old Boy Scout trick, which is dryer lint. I'm gonna try and get the lint in here underneath some of the small twigs. Light this with a match. All right, now you can see the draft kicking in as the flames lean backwards. And as we get that boosted burn going, the flames are gonna start coming out the top and the smoke's gonna go away. All right, let's move on to stove number three. 
the concrete and perlite stove with the ramp. To light this stove with the ramp, I'm gonna need a little bit more of a flash in the pan here, so I'm gonna go with newspaper. I've got longer sticks lined up down the ramp, and then I have also, as you saw, top loaded some smaller sticks to provide some, some smaller kindling for the stove to light. could probably use an angled firebox roof in order to be able to get more wood down the ramp here. We'll update this one in another video. Now this is the concrete and perlite stove um, and you can see that it has a an expansion crack in it too which is why I put the band around it. The perlite just weakened the concrete and when this ring needed to expand it found the weakest spot. I don't think it's a fatal flaw though. With that band the stove should stay together and function pretty well. Alright let's move on to the next stove which is the crack resistant concrete stove which doesn't have perlite and in fact hasn't cracked. Alright the fire starter that I have for this particular stove is a Q-tip that's been soaked in soy wax. And it's a nice little um, portable fire starter. I'm curious to see how this is gonna work. All right, so I've left this spot when I built the fire to put the Q-tip right in uh, a nice little bed of smaller kindling. And I've got a few sticks here, a few twigs here to, to put on top. Light this with a match. Probably could have built this fire a little further back in. But I don't want to move it because I'm afraid it'll go out. All right, so my Q-tip dipped in wax, was actually, I, which I actually thought was gonna do fairly well, was pretty much a fail. So let's try a Q-tip that's actually been dipped in olive oil. All right, so let's try this again. This time I've got the Q-tip that's been dipped in olive oil. Probably not the most portable fire starter, but might work in your backyard. We don't have a draw just yet because the flames are still going up outside the stove.
and there the draw is starting now. Okay, so the Q-tips really didn't do what I thought they would do, um, but uh, that's what we do here on this channel, experiment. Although we do indeed have a fire that is going, so this stove is in fact started. Maybe not as fast as I would have liked. Alright, so I've got the Rocket King cleaned out and reset in the same manner with my twigs behind the R and K. And then the fire built carefully beside it. But this time I'm going to light it with my Rocket Booster Fire Starter. The Rocket Booster is designed to fit right in the R with the wick sticking out so it can be easily lit. And there's just enough wax and sawdust to get our twigs lit. Alright, I'm setting up the fire brick rocket stove again and I'm going to use a fire starter made from lint that's been soaked in soy wax. But this time I'm actually going to build a fire around it. The fire starter is still burning, giving us a nice long start. Alright, so the lint plus wax was a nice performer. You could probably substitute candle wax for the soy wax. I just happened to have some soy wax around. Okay, so we're back at the ramp stove, and even though the newspaper did a really good job last time, I'm going to try it again, but this time with some cooking spray to see if we can get it to light up even faster. This is probably overkill, but I've never been afraid of overkill. Actually, I think it's burning slower. Got the draw going. And it might burn a little bit longer with the oil. I do think that one downside of newspaper is that it burns out pretty quickly. So the cooking spray might actually help this stay lit a little longer and get the fire started.
Now traditionally cardboard is not a very good fire starter because it just burns too slowly and sometimes there's additives in it that make it not burn. But I wanted to try and see if I could use it uh, with some wax just to see if it would be an opportunity to make some simple fire starters. All right, let's give this a light. Okay, so the cardboard with wax actually did pretty well. And that's about how I expected the Q-tip with wax to perform, which it didn't. So I think if I'm making some simple fire starters to take camping, uh, some cardboard and wax might be a good way to go. But sometimes you gotta go big. Let me introduce you to Max. So Max is my fire brick and cob rocket stove, which I'm gonna use as a furnace to melt some aluminum. You can check out the build video at the end of this video. To light a big rocket stove like this and light it quickly, sometimes lighter fluid is the best option. In fact, it's I'm skipping out on the small sticks and twigs to start this, going right to the medium size. Although I'm being careful to put the, the fuel inside the firebox and not out here in the opening. Stand back. All right, so there are 11 or so ways to light a rocket stove, including going big with lighter fluid. Maybe not the greenest option, but it works. There are also a few probably in that list that weren't viable options for you. And that's okay, we're an experimentation channel here. And uh, so you got to see those tests right along with me. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green, so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. And we'll see you in the next video.